Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Happy Saturday to you, Sipping Saturday, if this is your first time here. And welcome. Glad to have you here. If you've been here before, man, good to have you back. Now, if this is your first time here and you accidentally found this because you are actually looking for something else on the channel, what I would recommend is, man, hang out for a little while. This is a live stream. Got some great people in the audience. I have a special guest in the house. We are talking about plumbing questions today. Most popular plumbing questions. Man, I got a great guy in here to talk about stuff like that. So, man, as y'all come on in, uh, jump in the chat, say hello. If you're new here, man, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, hit that button twice. That makes it go away. Uh, hope y'all are doing good. First of all, Man, Alex, welcome to the show, brother. Thank How you, are thank you? you. Good. Okay, now this is the main camera up here. That is the okay. one that we look at and talk to and smile at and be friendly to. Everything else is just kind of here, you know? <laughs> uh, so it, it's it's all fun and games. Uh, man, we're, we're talking plumbing questions today. And, and I love this because me and you have been talking, God, for three hours this morning already. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's all plumbing questions, all about plumbing. Uh so this will be cool. If you've got questions today, do me a favor. When you put a question in the chat, put a cue in front of it. I want to make sure I hit every one of those. A lot of these I'll go through and I'll see y'all commenting back and forth, and I'm trying not to, you know, just mention all that. But if you've got a question, man, please put it in there. It's not just me. I've got moderators in here. I've got great people in here. Uh, and, and, and we're almost at 50, so I'll tell you all right now. Go ahead and drop in here. Who you are, where you're from, and what you do. So let's jump in. I want to jump into some comments real quick. I'll tell you what, first of all, let's, let's, let's don't even do that yet. Man, t t t tell everybody about you, who you are, what you what you do, and, and man, what life is like as a plumber in Dallas, Texas. Yep. So my name is Alex Gonzalez. I'm a master plumber in the state of Texas. I've been doing this for about 26 years, and I've done plumbing everywhere from – Iraq to Kuwait to Louisiana to Texas, and I'm just loving it, learning something new every day. So I'm assuming Iraq and Kuwait are probably about like Louisiana. It's probably yes. about, about the same. <laughs> Pretty Te close. Texas is a little bit different, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that part. Mm. Uh, and, and number one, you're a serviceman. Yes. What branch? Army. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yes, Appreciate sir. your service. And, and look, look let's, let's start off with that because popular plumbing questions – I have people that are in the military and are transitioning all the time. And they're like, man, I'd like to find something to do. And I see your videos and plumbing looks like it could be pretty cool. And what, what do you think for military people coming home about the trades? Not just plumbing. There's plumbing, electrical, HVAC. I call those, call those the skilled trades. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a license. That doesn't mean it doesn't take a skill to be a carpenter, auto mechanic, anything like that. What, what do you think for, for people transitioning is the trades a good opportunity? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, obviously people, service members get the GI Bill. And if you served before uh, 2001, then you get the just your standard G, uh, GI Bill. Excuse me. If you served after 9-11, then you get the post 9-11 GI Bill, which includes trade schools. So you can actually go to trade schools here locally in the state of Texas um, and then, of course, you have the Hazelwood Act as well. And as long as you go to a Texas accredited university, you can use that as well. So, uh, yeah, they, from what I understand, well, I'm sorry, what I went through was a thing called helmets to hard hats. And that's actually the Army does that. And they will assist you in the transition from regular service military to a trade. You know, and, and, the, and the cool thing about that is, look, service people normally have their stuff together. That they've, they've had a serious job where a lot of times somebody's just looking at them, telling them, do this. Right. And you're like, yes, sir. Why am I doing that? Because I told you to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, 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 man, believe it or not, that, that's a great way to think because a lot of times in the trades, it's like, hey, do this. We don't have time to explain why. Just do this. And it's like, okay. So, I, look, I think getting in the trades is a phenomenal way to transition out of the military into civilian life. Uh, so, man, I just I wanted to start out with that. But like I said, thanks for your service. I've got a nephew who's a fighter pilot in the Air Force. 
uh, Harrison Underwood, uh, you know, thank you, sir, for everything you do. Home Rapid Repair says, let's go, my friends. Guys, it is Saturday morning. Uh, I'm wearing burnt orange. I have my my Longhorn cup with me, just saying. <laughs> ah, drinking green tea today. You know, uh, and, and this would have been a great one to do Sipping Saturday for because, you know, see that big browning gun safe out there? Yes. It's full of tequila and bourbon. <laughs> uh, I mean, what else Not would what you I put? Thought was what there. else would you put? Oh, don't get me wrong. I've, I've got a Barrett M50 and an AR-15, and oh, wow. I, I've got my guns too, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, like it says there, ask any questions, and do me a favor, please put a Q in front of it. Home Rapid Repair says, I get asked when to upgrade to PEX when the old galvanized plumbing is starting to show problems. Man, I, I'd say up, <laughs> upgrade to PEX as soon as it starts showing any problems. Uh, yeah. Here in the Dallas area, we, we get rid of a lot of PEX, don't we? I mean, a, a lot of galvanized. Absolutely. Galvanized pipe, I, I man, I haven't seen galvanized pipe below the ground in 10 years, probably. Uh, the last time I saw it was in Garland, Texas, and it broke clean in half. Meter was turned on wide open, and there was not a single drop on the surface. It was blowing so fast and so hard, it was going into the crevices in the dirt. Oh, wow. And it was just gone. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm going to do something. Let's slide your mic over this way here. There you go. Just try to get you more <laughs> in screen. It's like you're over on one side, I'm yeah. on the other, and, you know. I would say like I did Rob Renfro. I said, I'm good looking. You're not. But, you, you it know, works. It he, works. He, he, yeah, he he. He didn't like that. I have much. the hair up here. You have the hair right here. I, I know. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it is what it is. It's <laughs> epic. Uh, Josh Crossan says, what's up, bud? Josh, how are you, man? Uh, great having you in here today. My brother, Architectural Sheet Metal 101 is in the house. Hello from Ontario, Canada. Man, good to have you in here. Uh, yeah, I've been talking to him. I got that barn out there. I'm wanting to close in that barn, mm -hmm. put AC in it, do all kinds of crazy stuff. Most people probably don't do in barns, uh, but I want to put a, a standing seam roof on it. And okay. man, dude nails it. Uh, if y'all have not gone over and subscribed to Architectural Sheet Metal 101, man, click on the little link up there. Go over there, subscribe to the channel, watch what he does. At the end of the day, look, I'm also a certified HVAC technician. Oh, wow. But I think that, man, we, what we learn in the trades and learn can learn from each other. I have a lot of people that watch me and say, look, I'm an electrician, but I just take out the word plumber when you say it and put in electrician, mm -hmm. and you make me better. I think that we can really learn a lot from each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's important that we all use our – skills to help everybody else. Otherwise, nobody's going to learn anything, and we're just going to be a bunch of weird people wandering the earth. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and we talked about that earlier. I always look at when, when I'm in a position that I need to learn things, I need to grow, I need to do something. I look at how does this help me, how does this help my team, and how does this help the world? Mm. And, you know, your world may be just the city you live in. It may be, the, you know, the county you live in. It may be the entire Metroplex. But when it's time for me to grow, I, I look at, okay, how is me learning this going to help me? How's it going to help my team? And that could be my, my team as the company. Mm -hmm. It may be my team as my family. It's my team. But how does this help me? How does this help my team? And how does this help the world? Right. Huge. Do everything. Derek says, do new houses still get plumbed in copper if you want it? Yeah, you can You can record. Look, like when... When you but when you're building a house, you can have all the plumbing put in upside down if you really want it done. Yep. It ain't gonna hold water, I'll tell you that. But yeah, you can you can look, here's the deal. And I've I've got a a friend buying a house and, and literally told him because he's talking to me, he's getting ready to go talk to the builder. And I'm <clears> like, <throat> number one, have them plumb it so there's a way to install a water filtration system. Mm -hmm. Meaning, yep. bring Software that water loop. line up in the garage, mm -hmm. put put a loop in, put a valve in it, put an access door, which I think every freaking house ever should have, <laughs> instead of having to go to the valve box outside or, or the meter, whatever. Mm. Put a valve in the house, put a valve box, hey, you can shut off the water your whole house in case a kid takes a hammer to the toilet. Not that my little brother ever did anything <laughs> like that or not. 
<clears throat> but I mean, then the homeowner knows how to shut it off immediately. Yes. And, and, and it's great for if you want to install a whole house water filtration system, which I love. The other thing is install an electrical outlet there mm. and install it. an electrical outlet behind every toilet. Guys, toilets are going to be electric pretty soon because we've got bidet toilets. Don't be yep. laughing at me. Don't no, be laughing right. at me. <laughs> I've got bidet toilet seats on two of my toilets at home. Uh, one of them, I've got a cord ran, you know, under the, the pedestal lab. But the other one, I had to install an outlet in my bathroom so that I could have my bidet toilet seat in there. I, I know what I want. So, yeah, you can get whatever you want in the house. <laughs> You can. I mean, if they if even they say, shocked. Yeah, yeah, you can get shocked. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm not an electrician. Uh, but 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 I mean, seriously, uh, if they build the house with tank top water, here's you can say, look, I want a tankless. Long as your plumber knows this up front, and he can increase the size of the gas line or increase the size of your gas meter. It, it's easy to do before the walls go up. True. Yeah. I tell people that when they call me in to do a bathroom remodel. It's like, let's put in a rain shower head. Let's put in body sprays. Let's put in another valve. Let's put in a stereo system. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we don't want all that. <laughs> it's like, no, but when you go to sell the house, your next buyer may. True. And they're like, okay, hadn't thought about that. But then it's always, why not? You know, I love people. I feel sorry for them, but I love them. <laughs> I love people that are like, hey, look. We're going to remodel the bathroom, and we're not going to do anything special. We just, we just, we just want new tile. It's like, wait a minute, while we're here, let's just upgrade this. They're like, no, we want to sell the house, so we're fixing everything. Okay, wait a minute. Why wait till you're selling the house to fix it so the new guy gets all the good stuff? Right. Fix your stuff now. Make it the house you don't want to sell. I'll talk about businesses that way. Build a business that you don't want to sell. Build a business that makes so much money. It's so good. It's so easy to run. I don't want to sell it because then if Alex wants to buy my business, it's like, dude, it's a lot of money. Yep. It's a lot of money. Alex, Ursu says, hey, from Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan Canada. <clears throat> Alex, good to have you here. I got a lot of Canadians in the house. Man, if y'all are Canadians in here, man, find a little flag. Drop, drop a little Canadian flag in there. Just put it next to your name or something. Upanor or Pex. In new homes. They're kind of the same. <laughs> Am I wrong? You are. I'm wrong? No, you're, you're right. Excuse oh, I was going to say, you're, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Yeah. No, no. no. Uh, Upanor is a brand of pecs and an expansion type. It, Correct. It's a, it's a top pex. So d I didn't mean that bad, Dustin, just so you know. I love Upanor. I, I like loop Upanor, too. I like it better. Instead of crimp fittings, I love Upanor because you expand it. And man, for the life of it, it's trying to shrink back down to its size. And do you ever fix Lupinor leaks? I have, but it's really? mainly it's mainly because those those you know years ago when they first came out with those white expansion rings, I have seen those fail. You okay. know, uh, they'll split, they'll pop off, they get dry, they discolor. But I've recently seen they have new red and blue ones now, and I think they're actually made differently so that doesn't happen. Oh wow, pretty so, interesting. I mean, I don't know. I just have to do some more research on that, but. One edits says, hey, I wanted to be a plumber, so can you help me? Now, we've kind of talked about that all morning. If, if you – okay, one edits says, look, Alex, I want to be a plumber. How would you tell him to get started? Uh, find somebody that's a plumber that you trust and roll with them. You know, hang out with them, pick their brain a little bit, find out the, the hardest things it was to learn up front. And, man, just get, get it in your head right away that you're probably going to be putting in a lot of long days, lots of hours just to, to get there. You know, and, and we've talked about <clears throat> making as much money as you want in the trades. But look, guys, uh, if, if Coulter and Randy in here, put a link in here to the Trade Talks, our other YouTube channel. I think I've got a banner for it that I might be able to find so y'all can just type it in another tab. Yeah, here it is right here. Uh you know, scrolling across the bottom. Guys, check that out because I've got a lot of people that, that help answer this. But, man, getting in the trades right now, it's an amazing time to get in the trades. Uh, and, and we've talked about this all morning, but 
if you're willing to put in the hours, and this is what Alex talked about, if you're willing to work a little harder than everybody else, if you're willing to go that extra mile and become the very best, you can make pretty much whatever kind of money you want to make. So just so you know, David Carruth Jr. says, okay, so is it true when you're in the union, there could be a period that you don't have a job and they have to call you when there's another job available? David, look, uh, have, did, have you ever worked union at no, all? No. Okay. So I worked union for about 25 years. Uh, Randy, Squirt, Henry, whatever you want to call him, uh, worked union for probably almost 20 years. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. And, and yes, I, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest and say yes, it's possible. But I will tell you this, in 25 years in the union, I never missed a day of work because there wasn't work. And we, we've talked about this already. If you come in with the idea of I'm going to be the best, okay, I got into the union after being open shop, so they treated me like I was a rat, like you know nothing, you're stupid, you, you don't even know how to do plumbing, even though you've got your license. So I made it my job to outperform them. I made it my job to come in. I want to be the best plumber on the job every single day. And if you walk in, if you get into the union and you come in with that attitude, you're going to be good. You're not going to get laid off. The ones who, and I, man, I hate to say this, I'm going to piss a lot of union people off right here. A lot of people that complain about getting laid off and not having jobs and waiting on the next call, they suck. And, and I'm just... If, right. if, if you've got five guys on your company and, and the phone stopped ringing and you got to let go of three of them, mm. never want that to happen. Which two are you keeping? The, the one that shows up for work every day and the one that doesn't complain about the work he's doing. Are you going to let go of your best guy? Never. <laughs> never. Never. That, there, there's no hesitation, y'all. <clears throat> never. Okay? Be that best guy. Show up on time. Man, man, there's so many things you can do to be the best guy. Yep. Listen to what he said. Show up every day on time and not complain. He didn't even say, look, I need the guy that can put it in the fastest, the strongest, sell the most, anything like that. Show up on time and don't complain. Sometimes it's that easy to be the best guy at your company. True. Dress like you're there to work. Uh, you know, people used to laugh at me. I'm, I mean – Y'all can't say it. Am I wearing starch jeans? Yes. <laughs> I wear starch jeans every day. <laughs> yeah, maybe every now and in here lately, now that I'm out at the, the outhouse, maybe not. But 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 the thing is, I was doing this when I was a hand in the union, when I was a plumber. I wore starch jeans. I wore a tucked in shirt. I looked like a professional every day that I showed up at work. A lot of people would show up in a ragged t-shirt. I remember being a superintendent out at the airport. I go out to pick up a guy one day. I get a call. He's up in the trailer. So I'm the superintendent. So I'll take the truck out of the airport and come up, go to pick him up. So I park. I don't know where he is. I call him. Like, hey, man, I'm down here at the end. And this guy comes walking up, man. He's got his got his toolbox thrown on his shoulder, and he's walking through the parking lot. And he's got a rip in his jeans from his crotch to his knee. <laughs> and I just stood there. I just leaned against the truck. It, it would have been nice for me to just yell stop or walk over to him, but I, I just – I just stood there and waited and let him walk all the way over to me. And I said, uh, you're the guy? He said, yeah. Okay. I said, do me a favor. Go home. And he looked at me and says, what, what, what do you mean? I've, I've been through the training. I've done this. You know, I've got my, my access badge. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. I said, yeah, but you know what? I don't want anybody who looks like you on my job. I run my jobs like it's my company. And in case you're ever seen in front of the customer, who's the general contractors, or you're seen in front of the public because we're at the airport, I don't want you to look like that. And he's like, you're joking. I said, no. I said, if you don't like that attitude, just don't come back. So that part's up to you. You come in tomorrow, look like a professional, like you're here to work, and we're going to be just fine. Upset the guy. I bet. But... I didn't care. It was my job. <laughs> so, 
yes, there, there's there's good things and bad things about the union. I love the union. I think if Mark McManus would talk to me, we could make the union one of the greatest things in the world. We could also help knock out that one million unfilled trades jobs across the United States right now. For sure. But, you know, he don't want to talk to me. I don't blame him. Uh, yes, David, that is true. Depends on how long the jobs are. Union <clears throat> workers love, yeah. Uh, I would think unemployment, but uh, I don't know. Maybe that's what you meant. Uh, uh, you know, my, my, my thing is, is, guys, look. The good people don't miss. They've always got a job. They're always, if I'm a superintendent and I've got Alex on my job and he's my best hand and I know we're slowing down, I may be calling the other superintendents. Hey, man, look, I got Alex out here. Does anybody want him? People are like, yeah, I want him. Don't, don't let him go. And, and guys, I've been through calls like that. I remember one of my first jobs in the union, I show up over in Plano to, to, to work on a project. I'd never even thought about that question. So, so it, it's a great question. <clears throat> David, but the superintendent came up to me and said, Hey, look, man, I'm going to let you know, uh, we're cutting back. He says, and I've got people on the job that I've got to keep. There's the union brotherhood type thing. <clears throat> I've got people here that I got to keep, but, but man, I told Ronnie, who's the, the labor manager, vice president, I told him not to let you go. Uh, I can't keep you here. So hopefully you get moved to another job. And I did. And they ended up keeping me till, till I decided it's time for me to go somewhere else. So it was a pretty cool deal. Glado Adeska, how are you doing? Good to see you in here. I hope everything's going well. Hello to you. Josh Crossan is a journeyman plumber. Josh, where are you located? Uh, the Plumber's Plungers is a journeyman plumber near San Antonio, Texas. Have you ever worked anywhere outside of the Dallas area? No. <clears throat> Mm-mm. I've, I work down in Austin, so I'd get down to San Antonio every now and then. So, man, good to have you in here. Alex Ursu says, Alex from Saskatchewan, Canada, journeyman plumber. So, Alex, I believe you're, you're a Red Seal, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Is that what they call that? Home Rapid Repair, Larry from the Midwest, licensed contractor. That's neat because I'm, I'm kind of talking to a guy now about being on the show that is a licensed plumber, HVAC tech, electrician, electrician, and contractor. Wow, and that—that's that, that, that's you got you got a lot of hats on right there. <laughs> uh, Dylan Stanford, apprentice plumber from Pensacola, Florida. Man, I love Florida. I was actually down in Miami, uh, God, earlier this week, past few days. I, I'm from Louisiana, and you said you worked down there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, is plumbing a lot different? And, and I know that Louisiana and Texas now have a reciprocity agreement. So I'm licensed in Texas. I can work in Louisiana if I want to. Uh, when we need help in Texas, we can call plumbers from Louisiana. They can come up, and, and, and they're licensed. We're good. Is there a lot of difference in the way plumbing is done here and there? No, not at all. Um, and strangely enough, when I was in, in Iraq doing plumbing there, we still followed the local plumbing codes. So we just used different kind of piping. You know, all the piping was in millimeters, and it was from Chile, so it was kind of weird. But, um, you know, it's really funny because a lot of the plumbers that – I was one of two SMEs there in country, and a lot of the plumbers, they would not have the right fittings to do the work or to create the, the plumbing system. And so they would look at it funny, and then they would just walk away from it. And instead, I'm used to – you know, I'd be out there with a file – filing down the fittings. We're going to make it work. Yeah, extra glue, <laughs> put it together, you know, that kind of thing. And then I actually, uh, I was an E4, so I was a specialist at the time, but they, I got bumped into an E6 slot where, um, you know, I should have been higher ranking, but I wasn't because I didn't have the time in the service. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. We did a lot of digging, lots of towers, lots of water pipe, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So, you know, here's the cool <laughs> thing about that too. You, you know, you're talking earlier about your GI Bill and stuff. <clears throat> I actually had a plumber working for me, Sergeant Plumbing here in the Dallas area. I actually was able to get him hours for his time in the military because he did do plumbing there. Mm -hmm. Towards him taking his journeyman exam, we we had enough hours for him to take his tradesman. He said, man, look, I want to take my journeyman. 
So I contacted the Texas State Board, talked to them, which, look, I love the Texas State Board, guys. If you communicate with them right, it's such an amazing thing. Between Lisa Hill, Frank Denton, uh, the board, just just calling down to the board itself. It, don't get me wrong, sometimes it's hard to get through, and I know that they had internet problems the other day. Yep. It happens. It happens to us out here. Matter of fact, I could hit a button right now and walk out and just put a message up, say, hey, we had internet problems. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'm going to do that, but I could. Uh, but, but you know, the, the cool thing about it is it's it's really easy to do stuff the right way. And when, when you look at working in an, another state, working in another place, contacting the board, contacting the local AHA authority mm-hmm. having jurisdiction – it just, man, man, it's so easy to do plumbing anywhere and still do it the right way each right. and every time. Ryan Fierra says, Ryan Land here, UA Local 344, Oklahoma City, living in the Red River Valley. Would love to be on your show, currently on the road, building a hospital in Alaska. Man, you are a long way from home. <laughs> See, that'd be interesting to find out what's plumbing like in Alaska compared to here. Mm. <clears throat> One edit says, I'm Kevin from Jamaica, gonna going to plumbing school, but I need to know more about plumbing. Well, that would be why you're what, – what did you know about plumbing before you started plumbing? Nothing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, and, and I always ask people that, and sometimes they look at me like I'm stupid. I knew nothing <laughs> about plumbing. I just got a job as a plumbing co- at a plumbing company, so I thought, okay, I'm going to be a plumber. Uh, guys, I got to tell you, most of us know nothing. That's why you're going to school. That's why you're here. And, and, and I will tell you this – one edits, you're already ahead of the game. You're not at work right now. You're not in school right now, but you're here learning. <clears throat> and you know, we talked about that. Mm. Man, I'm old school. If I had to, if I wanted to learn about plumbing when I was getting started, I had to go down to the library, which is this big brick building yep. that they filled with books. I know. I know that blows y'all's mind. <laughs> Do they exist? I, I, I know. You're, you're like, I got, wait, I got a whole <laughs> world of library right here. Mm. Uh, but, but I mean, man, that's what it used to be like. What, what about you? Uh, needs to know more about plumbing. What would you tell him? Network, get on social media, all the Facebook pages that you can, you know, if you, my space still exists, do that. Um, but yeah, definitely reach out to people, put yourself in a crowd of people and just hang out with them, pick the brain, ask questions and, um, yeah, read, read is Fundamental, as Kid and Play would say. And and I tell you what, I love that network. Guys, that's how I grew a business, learning to network. (laughs) Start learning it now. How do you get out? How how do you find – are there any trade shows, any conferences, anything at all? Guys, it will blow y'all's mind. There are trade shows and conferences almost every month that you can go to and learn about new product, new tools, new materials, new techniques. Mm. And it is amazing. Uh, Day 10 says, love that segue, bro. Uh, Derek from Minnesota. I'm a programmer and a DIYer. Love that. What? Oh, I thought you started to say something. Oh, no. Uh, Ryan, hello. Uh, Day 10 says, what's up, fellow tradesmen? You know, I, I love that. Fellow tradesmen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of let a little bit of the, the cat out of the bag. Uh, I, I'm, I'm building an app. <laughs> It's called Wakefield. Uh, it's not available yet, but if y'all will make sure you're on one of these two channels, I know that I've got the the Trade Talk banner scrolling on the bottom. Uh, we're doing some cool stuff. But but it's about tradesmen, not just plumbers, not just electricians, HVAC techs, roofers, carpenters, flooring people. It's about the trades. Uh, now don't get me wrong. I specialize in plumbing. That's That's who I are. That's what I do. <laughs> But, but man, the trades are, are what it's all about. Uh, skilled trades are the new life hack. No doubt about that. Justin Cook says, Upanor is the W. I don't know if you mean the, the winner or what, but I like it. Uh, how do you keep your master and journeyman license active at the same time? Well, Cortez, here in Texas, I mean, do you know? Used to, used to, well, I know you know. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. How do you keep your journeyman and master active at the same time? I just had to renew mine. Yeah, you just renew it. Renew I, your I'm, master. Both of mine are active as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah me too. 
renew your master. And I've got a master with every endorsement in Texas. So I've got the WSPS, the fire protection specialist, uh, med gas, med gas, uh, the RMP. Now mm-hmm. the RMP is not active because I don't have an insurance card on file, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. Here we go. No. Has anyone fixed a rooftop unit negative 40 degrees Celsius? No. But I do know negative 40 Celsius is about negative 40 for us. Mm -hmm. That's friggin' cold. I don't even leave the house at zero. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Cortez says, how do you keep them? Okay, so we already talked about that. Mm -hmm. Dustin says, Upanor is the way to go. There you go. See, I knew that W stood for something. Cortez says, last time saw galvanized pop was a month ago in South Dallas. Uh, broke at the main water main shutoff valve. The house and inside that galvanized pipe looked like mountains. I'll tell you what, uh, I've, man, I've had to cut open some walls in Fort Worth uh, to change valves, uh, shower valves that the it was hard pipe galvanized. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, luckily we don't see a lot of that anymore. No. Uh, but, you know, D- Dallas is old. We, we, we still do have stuff like that. Uh, Canadian Bacon 420 says hello from Saskatchewan. Alex says Canadian Bacon. What's up? <laughs> I know. Got, I know. Between Canadians, man, there might be as many Canadians in here as there are Americans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do everything, Derek. <clears throat> says looking to add a whole house water filter. Love all the stainless filter housing, but they cost a fortune. Have you seen many problems with the plastic whole house filter housings leaking or bursting? Mm. It's a great question. Have you seen any problems? With no. That? And to be honest with you, I don't think the stainless steel jacketing does anything for performance. I think it's just a shroud. Yeah. I think it's just a way for them to stand out in the market. Um, you know, I've I've installed hundreds of water treatment packages for all ranging all the way from Novo to Flotec to Culligan to Aquasana on you know, several of the Amazon ones. We, we don't talk about Flotec here. <laughs> um, but I, I can tell you that the 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 cosmetics of the unit is probably the last thing you would need to worry about. Yeah, I've I've buried the fiberglass mm-hmm. units and never had a I've problem. With hundreds them. of them. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Cortez is plumber in Dallas, Texas. Service plumber mm-hmm. and leak locator for sewer and water and repairman. Cortez, number one, I love that. Uh, I just took Alex out a while ago and showed him. I, I'm building a training center. Oh, I probably should have mentioned this already. This video is sponsored by Leak Pro. <laughs> uh, Leak Leak Pro to me is the best leak detection equipment that there is out there. Uh, I le- looked at a lot of them. I'm glad your question came in because literally, I acquired Leak Pro, and because and I did it because it was good, not just because it was easy to acquire. But I've been trained through you know two different brands of equipment. And Cortez, I mean, I'd love to talk to you about what you do because I'm building a training center here to teach people slab leak detection for water and sewer isolation, mm-hmm. the whole thing. So love what you do, brother. It's a, it's a specialty to me, and it's something I think every plumber should learn to do. So go check out leak-pro.com and tell me what you think. Kyle Covington, an aspiring plumber, and he loves your content. You're doing great. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. When it says, hey, bro, I'm from Jamaica. Need to know more about plumbing. We, we, man, we've been talking about it. You're in the right spot. Oh, Martha Quatch says, what trade school would you recommend in Houston for second-year apprentice relocating from Florida? You, you know, if I were looking at trade schools in Houston, number, number one, Local 68, uh, the union, they they do service work down there, too. Or they train it. Uh, PHCC in Texas, Plumbing, Heating, Cooling Contractors Association, is fantastic. So, yeah, that, that's probably where I would start. A lot of work in Texas, though. You're, you're not going to have any problem getting a job. Mm-mm. Cortez says, is it a bad idea to put PEX under the slab? A lot of homes are being built with PEX under the slab right now. Every day. Yeah, just don't tie it together. Yeah, don't, don't, no, yeah, don't no put your fittings under the slab, mm-hmm. right? Just like copper. Yeah, straight through. Man, I love this one. Cortez says, should we start putting tracing wire on the new PEX main water lines? Yes. 
Are y'all doing that? Or, which you don't do new construction either. We don't do new construction, but whenever we pull a PEX yard service, you know, whenever we do pipe splitting or whatever, we always lay tracer wire on Love top that. of an insulated PEX because although in Texas our freeze line is twelve inches or shallow or less, right? We still insulate and we also do the tracer wire. Yes. And how deep are y'all burning them? As deep as we can, eighteen, mm-hmm. twenty-four, or something like that. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Twelve inches is all we're required to do. So Correct. it does it, it. It makes a big difference. Uh, Cortez depends on what you want to do. Oxygen barrier pipe for slab heating. Otherwise, should be fine. We don't do a lot of oxygen barrier down here. Uh, can I get your number so you can take time to teach me plumbing? Yeah, we we don't do that either. Uh, there's courses. Got, one is that there's a million. If I gave out my plumber to every plumber that wanted to talk plumbing, I could be on my phone all day long. Uh, I don't get me wrong. I love it, but but that's. That's what I make these videos for. Mm. Yeah, I, I make videos to tell you everything you need to know. Just get in there and learn it. Uh, I got one from California. T.T. Vils says, hello, Roger and Alex. I am Tony, apprentice plumber for four years, working commercial plumbing here in Dallas. Have you heard of a book called Plumbing, Venting, Decoding, Chapter 9, IPC? Plumbing, Venting, and Decoding, Chapter 9, IPC. So it's probably about code. I have not heard about that book. Have you? No, I haven't. But I would imagine it would probably be worth a read for sure because the code for us changes all the time. And you don't know what the code is one minute to the next. From city to city. Yeah, city to city. And so I would definitely, if that's a book, it's a real thing, definitely dive in. And and, and here's the thing, too. When I say city to city, I'm serious. You don't just have to know what code they go by, what addendums have they made. Mm Mm-hmm. And you better be very, very familiar with them. Uh, Adam Sortelli says, hello from Montreal. Man, more Canadians in the house. Hey, America, wake up. Come on, y'all. Uh, we're getting overran here. No, it's a good thing. I Look, I have some of my uh, – look, I've had great people. Matter of fact, uh, next week, Jeff Thurman, home, Reno DIY TV, is in the house of Canada, Canada Canadians. Y'all need to be here next week because <laughs> Jeff is phenomenal. Cortez has fixed an Upernor leak and a new mansion house in the wall. Look, they do happen. Mm. It's just not near as often as the Pex crimp or, or even copper. But, you know, copper that we fix nowadays has been in the ground for 50, 60, 70 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're talking about most popular plumbing questions. What are your most popular plumbing calls? What what kind of calls do you run in your company, not just you? Mm-hmm. What kind of calls do y'all run every day? Um, well, I mean, m- the majority of the calls are leaks in the ground, whether it's under slab, whether it's in the yard. Typically, it's always a water leak of some sort. And, you know, they're. I think personally, they're just the most common. Do you think most plumbers – know how to find those leaks the right way. I don't. It, it, isn't that bad? I, I mean, I, mean I, I don't mean, look, and, and this is not just because leak pro, mm-hmm. but I mean, when I started my company seven, eight years ago, uh, one of my best friends says, make sure you get a good company to do leak detection for you mm. and don't work with real estate agents because they're a pain. So I walked out thinking, okay, Real estate agents are a pain because they know exactly what they want. They want it then. They want it right now. They want it done right. Okay, I can do that. I can charge more for it. I'm not going to be the cheapest company in town. Mm. I want to be one of the best. <clears throat> and, oh, by the way, I want to learn to do slab leaks because I don't want to trust other people. True. And, man, has that turned out good for me. Mm-hmm. So check out leak-pro.com. It will change your life. Uh, but, no, uh, it doesn't matter if it's open or not. Like he says, look, leaks are one of the biggest things. To me, it's, it was always leaks and running toilets because mm-hmm. that's the one people are just obvious to. A faucet can drip for three years. They'll never see it. <laughs> but when that toilet starts running, they're like, ooh, I'm wasting water. Yeah. <sighs> Ryan says, my repairs on open or pecs usually seem to always be on the hot side. Recently plumbed a hotel casino in Oklahoma. It was 100% pecs up to three inch. Wow, the future is now. 
I've never even ran three inch packs. Have you? Uh, I've <clears> run two inch packs, but not three. I've got, yeah, I've got, and I think I've got two inch expanders are used to have. Mm. <clears throat> so yeah, that's crazy. And, and the, the height makes sense on packs. I don't know about the opener though. Well, I, because of the expansion and contraction, you that, know, it, it moves. That and I, you know, because our water is so sandy, right? Water is super abrasive unless you're treating the water. Um, and the the heat from the water from the water heater it just weakens that pipe, just softens it. So you're sandblasting an already softened material. I, I can see that. <clears throat> Nothing's perfect. <laughs> just letting y'all know that. <clears throat> Uh, red and blue Upanor pipe was splitting. Have been seeing that a lot. See, around here I haven't. Not a lot. You? No, not not at all. And and I know that, that there's yeah, there here we go. Scott Watson says, yeah. doesn't Upanor have a lawsuit against him? I think out in California there there's some kind of a lawsuit going on. I'm I'm not confirming or denying. I'm just telling you I've heard something about that. Uh Cortez is from the US. Good to know. Architectural Sheet Metal 101 says, because I learned a trade, I was able to put a down payment on a house, then open a business, then get a bigger house, then build a house, now own a metal roofing company and build homes. There you go. You, you know, and, and, and that's something too. And, and, and I love this. Because I, I want you to think about this. He's continuously growing. You know, I didn't just want to open a, a plumbing company you know, you said it earlier. If I ever open a company, I want it to be the best plumbing company in right. Texas. And that was my plan. Look, I want to treat customers right. I want to do the work better than everybody else. I don't want to rip people off. I want to I want to hire ethical plumbers. And man, stuff like that. So it, it it's there's a lot to that. And and I, I like that. All because he got into the trades. Guys, the trades can open doors for you. That, that will just literally blow your mind. Uh, Scott Watson says, Roger, you're the best brother. Uh, my brother might disagree, but I, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to agree with you. No, Scott, I appreciate that, man. Uh, look, I, I, I owe this all to y'all. I, I get to do what I get to do because of y'all. I am in a position where, look, I get to travel the country. I was in Miami the other day talking to a possible sponsor. Uh I'm, I'm living the most amazing life I could have ever imagined. Like he said, all because I got into the trades. Guys, mm -hmm. it can be whatever you want it to be. One edit says, if I'm not that good at plumbing, can I still work at a company? And then I can learn more from there. Absolutely. You know, when, when you hire apprentices or have in the past, have you ever hired Green apprentices. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. A lot of times I'd rather hire a green apprentice because they don't have bad habits already. Agreed. They don't come in with that mindset. You already know what to do. Uh, no, no, you don't. You don't know our way. Yeah. Uh, you may know how to solder copper, which I thought I knew how when the first time I did it. And, and then you get to doing it and it's like, wait, wait a minute, slow down, stop, back up, take that apart. Here's how we do it here. And you know, your systems and processes, how mm -hmm. do you want things done? So, the fact is that, to be honest, we hire people to train them. I had to learn plumbing by getting hired and learning plumbing. I'll go back and tell you again, look, you're already ahead of most other people because you're in here saying, look, how do I learn? How do I get better? Very true. Let me, let me ask you another question. We're, we're talking popular plumbing questions. When you, If you hire 10 people this month, mm -hmm. How many of those 10 are trying to be the best? Probably one. <laughs> and you said probably. You didn't even say yeah. there's going to be at least one. Yeah, I mean, probably one. So, I, I love it. This is the kind of questions the plumber who's trying to be the best asks. Mm -hmm. Okay? What do I have to do to learn? How do I learn? How do I grow? You're off to a good start. Do not stop. Anybody in here right now that's in the trades, I will tell you all one thing. Never stop learning. Okay? And if you need to stop and write that down, write it down. Never stop learning. Because the day you do is when, I see we have Mr. Cody Frank in the house. That is the day that, that your career will start to plateau. 
If you keep learning, you can keep growing, and it's huge. Uh, Ron Fierro says, Roger, you're right about people who sit on the bench for a long time. They are complainers who usually are the first layoff. And, and what we say, if you had to keep two plumbers, yep. one who doesn't complain. And shows up on time every shows day. Shows up on time. <laughs> guys, guys there, there's a list. And any one of y'all can go go to Google right now and search. Search uh, what, what are the 10 habits that take no skill? And, guys, these are things that will make you the very best. Absolutely. You know, show up on time. Be honest. Don't leave early. Uh Man, come in dressed, ready to go. Yeah. It's 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 little crazy stuff like that, but it is so huge. Uh, Rita Materne says, so many people have said the same to be. They don't have time for my kind. I'm a hard worker that doesn't tolerate BS. Uh, you know, that look, I say a lot the union doesn't like me. The union contractors loved me. That's why I made great money there. The union didn't like me because I showed up and I didn't put up with anything either. I I would have guys come up and say, well, according to the contract, you can't do that. I'm like, boy, I got the contract right here in my book, not right here in my pocket. So let's go through this, okay, because I want you to be clear because we're not having this conversation again. And they didn't like it. You know, the union does protect the bottom rung people. And I'm sure there's a good reason. But my thing is, you 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 know, they've got a standards of excellence. And if people worked up to that standards of excellence, the union would outdo everybody in the world. And that's God's honest truth because it talks about how to do the right thing each and every day on the job instead of sitting back and saying, hey, the union says, you know, I ain't got to do that because there's not three people sitting around watching me. Man, when you want to be that kind of a hand, you're on, the, you're on my cut list. Yeah. Just put that out there real quick. Cortez says, Rita, if nobody can tell you nothing, then I wouldn't hire you either. Uh, you're the type of person that won't learn anything, and you're a person that knows everything. I said, did I read that wrong while I go on, Rita? So many people have said the same to me. Okay, talking about that. Oh, yeah. They don't have time for my kind. Uh, I'm a hard worker that doesn't tolerate business. Guys, here, here's the deal. And, and, and look, Alex has ran a lot of people. Uh, he, he, he's been in a, a ops manager position, a service manager position. So he's running trucks and crews and men. Nobody wants anybody that doesn't want to listen. Mm. Nobody. You know, I, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was hiring a guy. You would know his name if I told you. Mm. A top salesman at, at a lot of the bigger companies around. But he bounced. He, he, he didn't get comfortable anywhere. And when I hired him, he came in and he told my manager, yeah, I'm, I, look, I, I don't, I don't want to do the iPad stuff like that. I don't want to do this. I, wanna, I, don't wanna go, I need to get out and start selling. I need to start making money. I need to do this. I need to do this. Biggest mistake I ever did. And, and now, just because you tell me you're the best, you got great sales, okay, we're going to talk about it. And here's what my onboarding looks like. Are you willing to do every bit of it? How big a deal is that nowadays? Onboarding and, and oh, training people the right yeah. ways to do things. On, onboarding is huge um, because number one, you're you're introducing the culture of the business to them, and two, you're letting them know how your systems and your process and procedures are lined out. Because it, I mean, in all honesty, one person can be toxic to your entire team. And was yeah, you 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 can't have that, and you got to identify it if you hire it by mistake because some people are good interviewers. You need to not notice it immediately and deal with it immediately. Don't wait. And, and and I'll tell you how bad it was at that. From that point in time forward, I was not allowed to hire anybody anymore. Because literally, <laughs> I just hired him because it's like, look, he had a great reputation. Yeah, I know who he is. Know what kind of sales he does. Yeah, you're hired. Mm -hmm. Biggest mistake I ever made. Uh, matter of fact, the last job he did, he sold for about forty percent of what it should have sold for. Oh wow. Had been over there working on it for a week, but he'd always leave early. Well, I need to go sell another one. I need to go do this. I need to go do this. I need to go do this. Uh, of course, he got thrown in jail and had to leave and yada, yada, yada. So I sent my guys over to look at it, and they're like, Roger, we've got to tear out everything he did and redo it. Mm. And so, yeah, I lost my rear end on that one. Uh, understand that one there. Scott Watson says, shout out to Hard Times Plumbing 
out of Haltom City. Have you heard of Hard Times yet? I've seen some trucks. Have you? Yeah, one or two trucks, I think. Cool deal. Uh, Ryan says, I got two separate UA affiliated owners' numbers who want me to call them by name before I call the hall. Your reputation goes a long way. You know, Ryan, and that's a, that's a great thing right there. I was the same way. Uh, we, we had this conversation earlier. <clears throat> I remember one time getting a job. I bounced back and forth between two companies in the union for almost 20 years. And then the last year or two, I went to work for a different company. And I remember having a conversation with my dad one day. I had just moved from one company to another. And, and my dad told me, he says, hey, uh, he says, look, why don't you just find a company and settle down, st- get stable and grow there? So I explained to him, I said, Dad, look, I don't just leave companies. Mm. People pay me to leave. I said, this last job that I just left is an extra twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a year, 12 plus they were working overtime. And he just kind of looked at me and said, wait, an extra twelve grand a year is a raise? I said, yeah. He said, just keep doing what you're doing, son. I think you're doing okay. <laughs> uh, Rita says, I don't act like I know everything. People don't have time to teach me because I don't know everything. You know, Rita, there, there's something, there's a fine line there. I think people, here, here's the deal. And Alex, you tell me if I'm wrong. I think people will teach people that they think are willing to learn. If if I've got an apprentice that I know he is not going to listen to me, he is not going to do what I say, but he comes up and says, hey, show me how to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what, figure it out. Because I know he ain't going to listen to me anyway. I've interviewed so many people that when they walked on the job site, you know, superintendents, well, when I walked onto a new job site, uh, Randy, Randy tells a great story about it. Walk onto the job site, superintendent starts showing you around and they'd be like, you know, these are these guys, these are these guys and shows you around the whole job. And Randy says, I'd always found the old welder because Randy was a pipe fitter. Randy say, that's who I want to work for over there. And he'd be like, no, no, nobody wants to work for them. No, that's the one I want to work for. He said, no, you don't. He's hard to work for. He's a pain. He yells at people. He screams at people. That's okay. That's who I'm going to learn for sure. And and guys, Rita, here's what I would tell you. I mean, nothing bad by this. I'm just hearing what is being written, and text doesn't convey a lot of things. I would look at how do I have to get, what do I have to do to get them to teach me? And maybe you walk in and build that relationship. Mm-hmm. Alex, look, man, I really want to learn to be a good plumber. What do I need to do? Start with that. What do I need to do? And then close your mouth mm-hmm. and open your ears. And that's what a lot of apprentices don't do. And look, Rita, don't know anything about you, so I'm not getting on you. Please understand that. But you've got to be willing to learn and coachable before people are going to want to coach you. And True. Does that, does that make sense? And that'd be a good question to ask. Find somebody, find somebody that everybody looks up to and ask them, or do you, do they think you're coachable? You know, because a lot of times, you know, if you have 10, if you have 10 employees and out of those 10 employees, two are carrying the load of the, of the, the company or the department, which happens a lot. Yeah. Your 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 leadership is not going to waste their time with the lower eight people. They're going to put all their time and energy and effort into those two people, and then they're going to find out the other people to replace the other eight. You know, I, I heard a great leadership training one day. <clears throat> You've got twenty percent of the people on the very bottom. They're uncoachable, untrainable. They don't want to learn. Okay, you've got sixty percent in the middle. They get things done. They're not your best performers. They're not your home run hitters, but they show up every day. They get things done. There's not a problem. Then you got your top 20%. So you got 20%, 60%, and 20%. Like you said, we need to be spending our time on the top 80%. What can I do with these 60% in the middle to get them to the top 20? The top 20 really don't need me. I'm, I'm there for support. I am non-productive overhead. My job is to make their job easy. Get them the materials, get them the tools, get them wherever they need, and let them go do what they do. Here's the problem. Most of us as managers and owners and leaders, 
We focus on that bottom 20%. We keep trying to pull the people up out of the basement. What can I do to get you up to this middle 60? I don't even need you up top right now. Get to this middle 60. Mm-hmm. What can I do to get you up here? And we should instead walk in and say, look, you got 90 days to get yourself up out of there. Mm-hmm. If you can't hit this middle 60%, I don't need you. Yeah, I will replace you. Performance action plan. Yeah, you, you bet. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I like that. Performance action plan. Here's what I need you to do. Yep. I need you to learn to solder. I need you to be on time every day, and I need you to quit complaining. Start with those three things right there. We'll move forward. Yeah, we used to do that in the military, you know, when we were to come back from a block leave or whatever, and we would always go on these super long runs. So anything – any run from the kitchen to the back porch for me is too long, but we would go on like six mile runs. And what they would do is they would take the shortest people. They would have three groups, a group, B group, and C group. C group was usually your slowest people. A group was always your fastest. And what they would do is they would switch it. They would put a group at the back, C group at the front. And then that was the pace for the run. That way nobody was left behind. So if you take, if you take a person who's inexperienced but has the will to learn and has the all the energy and the want to and you put them at the front of everything, everybody else is going to help build that person and you keep bet. pushing that person forward. So that's, you know, it goes with all, all ways. I love that. Such a cool deal. Uh, Crypt Keeper says, hey, Roger, looking into creating a grease trapping business, do you think it's worth it and how much could I potentially make? Well, number one, there's a ton of them out there. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I don't know if I said this. Uh, Othniel Carbajal says going to test this month. Number one, congratulations. Uh, study, study, study. Yes. I recommend the UPC and IPC plumbing study guides. They're both fantastic. Uh, Take a but, prep course. Yeah, yeah, t- yeah. The, the Texas prep courses, depending on where you're at, Texas prep courses are amazing. Uh, Crypt Keepers is looking to creating a grease trapping business. Look, there's a lot of them out there, so I'm sure they make good money. I just didn't. That that's nothing I'd want to do. I don't like the grease that much. <laughs> grease traps are part of the worst part of plumbing jobs for me, service yeah. wise. Uh, messes up your sewer machine and camera and everything else. But there's good money in it. So very. Alex Usru says EI is a Canadian term. Uh huh. Thank you, sir. Cortez, if someone above you tells you to do something about five times and you still don't learn how to do it, plumbing is not for you. Cortez, and and I'm going to change that. If somebody tells me to do something that I don't understand, I need to ask for clarification. Yeah. So you can tell me five times how to tie my shoes, but if I've never tied it, I, I don't know what to do. But if I say, look, will you show me? Exactly what you want. Show me how to do. Hey, I've never done that. Will you show me what you want? And I used to tell apprentices that. Don't let the journeyman think you know how to do anything you don't. Hey, grab that sawzall and cut conduit. Well, if you don't know what you're doing, you're liable to cut your finger off. If you've never ran a tool, do not pick up a tool and run it unless you've told that journeyman, will you show me how to do this? So Cortez, that's the only thing I'm going to tell you now. Now, if you've showed me five times and I can't do it, now I've got an issue. Yeah. Now I've got an issue. So if you're an apprentice in here, think about this. And i got to hurry up on comments. We're 30 minutes behind. If you ask a journeyman how to do something, Listen to what they tell you to do. Don't have to ask them again tomorrow how to do the exact same thing. And, and that is big. That, that That's one of my pet peeves. If you want to be a good apprentice, we were talking about this a while ago, when a journeyman explains to you how to do something, man, pull out a pen and paper, write it down, take notes, do whatever you got to do. And if you still don't understand, like we were talking about right here, Alex, will you explain that again? Like I, you, you said... Flux it. I, I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, flux is a paste. You need to get a brush. You know what? Here, let me show you. And then show them how to do one. Let it, let them watch you. Then you do it. Now, hand them everything. So here, now you do it. Let me see you do it. Make sure they go through all the steps. And, man, if you got an apprentice, if you're a journeyman, and you got an apprentice writing stuff down, slow down to where he writes down whatever he needs to write mm-hmm. down. Make their job better. Rommel Edwards, apprentice, second-year plumber out of Miami, Florida. I was in Miami two days ago. 
Uh, flew home Thursday, Tuesday. I was there Tuesday through Thursday. Great place. Love it. Red Seal Journeyman Plumber. I love that. Mr. Activated says, hey, I'm Sean. I have an upcoming interview, Local 68. Any advice going in? Look, yes, and, and, and I love this. Whether you're interviewing for an apprentice job uh, or, or journeyman, wherever you're trying to get in at, or any other company, if you're interviewing with Alex, Alex is looking for something. You need to understand, Alex is not just trying to hire people. He has a need. He needs a journeyman. He needs an apprentice. He needs somebody he's already told you that if you had the conversation, he needs somebody who's going to show up on time and not complain. Mm. And you can think something's wrong. You don't have to complain about it. You come to him and say, hey, Alex, look, man, uh, y'all were going to get me some tools. I was just checking. Uh, I think I could be more productive if I got them. Wow, you know what? Okay, you're not complaining then. You're, you're conveying information. Mm -hmm. There's ways to do it. I just, dude, you ever going to get me my tools? You know what? I'm going to make you wait another week right yeah, there. You're inquiring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alaskan plumbing sounds horrible because it's so cold. No <laughs> doubt. You ever worked in negative 40? No. Yeah, me either. I don't ever want to either. Uh, you Squiddy Pacific says my main drain pipe, a couple of inches above the main city pipe, so the water has to flow up a little bit. Is that okay? No. And if your main is a couple of inches up from the main city, that means you're above, it should be going down. You may have it backwards. I mean, you may have wrote it wrong, so I understand. My plumbing's making a noise when I flush my toilet. You have a partial clog or a clog, get ready for it. Drain cleaning right now. Mm -hmm. uh, run a camera. Do what you got. Knowledge is power, sir. Try to learn something every single day. Guys, I'm going to get going through these quicker because I am literally about 30 minutes behind. I'm 32 minutes behind right now. And I normally don't get this far behind, but uh, good morning. Happy Saturday. Ask the big difference between the plumbing of L.A., California, and Houston. R really, the big difference is going to be the difference in materials. In, in California, you're going to use ABS. Texas, you're going to use PVC and PVC mainly, Dallas <laughs> and Houston. Uh, maybe still some cast iron in both. You ever use ABS, install ABS? No. I found two houses in Dallas, went in to do repairs, and they were plumbed in ABS. Blew my mind. Fox and Jacobs used to do that. They I, Lots and lots and lots of houses from Fox and Jacobs in Dallas and Coppell, the Colony, and every single one of them was cast iron and ABS. Crazy. Every single one. Crazy. Uh, thank you, Not Bob. <clears throat> Give me space. Can you tell me how to do the drainage system work? Yes, gravity feed. Water goes downhill. If you pour it, and to be honest, and I'm I'm just I'm not trying to give you the short, quick answer, but that's exactly what it is. Uh, it works. Court says I'm old school. I use geophones. Did Did Randy plug in the headphones and let you touch the probe and all yes. that earlier? Yeah. Are they? Is it different from geophones? Oh, it is. And, and I use geophones. I have two sets. You know, that's a proven theory. It's a trusted theory. It, it works. I, I I do my best work. I've only knock on wood and prayed everything we'd pray for, but. I've in my career, I've only missed two or three leaks using geophones, mm -hmm. and I've only missed them by maybe a foot or two. Not not crazy, <clears throat> um, but again, trust but verify. You know, absolutely. One thing I like about the 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 leak pro stuff too is, <clears throat> once we think we're close, we can literally pull back carpet or if it's already concrete or something, drill a little half inch hole mm -hmm. in the slab. Stick Put that, that probe, probe down, down in, there. in there and listen, and you're like, "Yep, there it is." Yeah, and you know, General made one of those called the Gen I, the Gen Ear, I believe, uh -huh. years and years and years ago, and it was great. But now you can't find them, and if you do find them, they're used and they're missing pieces and they're broke. So, uh, what do you think about being a backflow technician? I used to be, but there's so many people certifying backflows for such a low price. It's mm -hmm. like I can't do this and make any money. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen as a plumber, Alex. Hmm. That's a great question. I, to be honest, I can't put my finger on one specific thing. Um, mine mine yeah, is probably I pulling squirrels, birds, stuff like that out of sewer lines. Okay. That, that's, that's probably the craziest. And then again, some of the stuff you find in some of the sewer lines. 
Uh, from Alberta, Canada, third year residential service plumbing technician. Welcome to the show, Jim. How do water softeners work? Everybody thinks it's by removing calcium and magnesium, but it's mm -hmm. not. Dirty water goes in, clean water comes out. Uh -huh. it's, it's all expensive. the customer needs to know. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you think he's joking. That is the best answer for a customer. Mm -hmm. If a customer asks me how do water softeners work, they work very well. Yeah. Normally, that's enough. Yeah. They're like, okay. Uh, now, if they start going in depth, I say, have you ever taken a shower in soft, soft water? Mm -hmm. If you like it, you call that a silky feeling. Mm -hmm. Not slimy. If you hate it, you call it a slimy feeling. Yep. And, and, and man, that, that, that's it. That, that is it. Okay, you was up in... Michigan. Love it up there. Used to go up there for the IPC, uh, I, ITP instructor training program for the union. Cody Frank, all is well, brother. Uh, IPC versus UPC code. And they're getting so close. I, I, look, I, I'm old school. Uh, I love the uniform plumbing code. I love their study guide. I think it teaches good plumbing. IPC versus UPC. D does it really matter to you? It doesn't really matter. Um, and you know, believe it or not, most most residential applications are going to the IRC anyway, and it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that from both. So it's all there. Scott Watson, shout out to Hard Times Plumbing. I know we said that already. Doesn't Opener have a lawsuit? Believe so. Uh, Rob Gutchis, gotcha. plumbing apprentice in Oklahoma. What's your opinion on Nextar? Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I've been involved with Nextstar just a little bit. And, and I'm going to tell you my story behind it. Uh, when I sold Texas Green Plumbing to Rescue Air, they asked me to go to BPW, Business Planning Workshop. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, blew my mind. Uh, Coach Bill Weaver was there. Uh, it was an amazing thing. And I, I, but before I go into any more depth, everybody in here right now, and all I want is a yes or a no. Have you ever heard of best practice groups? And and I don't want to say a whole lot more right there. Just real quick, if you would, in the chat, in the comments, go down there and just put yes or no. Have you ever heard of best practice groups? So, Rob, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, I met with Julian last week. And Julian's the president and CEO of Nextstar. And, and literally, man, it, it was just going to be a quick 10-minute conversation, and, and we we ended up talking. It was great. He said, man, look, I'd like to talk some more. Okay, so right now, all I'm getting is no's. Uh, and, and guys, please, just take one minute. If you're in here right now, have you ever heard of a best practice group? And see, all I keep getting are no's. And, and you know, it, it, it's Nextstar, it's SGI, it's Service Roundtable. I mean, I mean, there's a few of them around. But I'll tell you what, especially after – and Julia and I scheduled another meeting, so we talked again. I would love to have Julian come in and do this show. I've, I've offered it to him, said, man, look, I'd love for you to come and do a podcast, do a video, do the show. Let's talk about what all you do. Uh, yes, I have heard about them, and, and I think that they're a great training program. And you've been at companies that have actually used them. Oh, yeah. And they do have a, an amazing training program. They do. They do. Um, I've been privileged and um, attended not only those diff different events, but we've also hosted BPW. And I can tell you, it, it's it's really neat to see and really neat. You know, you're talking about 150 to 200 people that are from different companies through the entire United States. And they all get together in one room and just work as a team and together and so many different ideas. It's it's awesome. It's crazy. And it's usually a week long. Yeah, the, the one I went to was three days. Yeah. Uh, and, and the one I went to, God, where was it? We were in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, and it was. It was fantastic. Guys, remember, this video is sponsored by Leak Pro. If you want to get better as a plumber, if you want to improve the value that your plumbing company brings to its customers. I think Leak Pro is one of the best leak detection pieces of equipment out there. Headphones, you get a sidekick, you get a probe, but we just finished building the training center here. So we're training people on how to use it. And and this is literally the way. Do, do you think slab leak and leak detection jobs are your biggest revenue source at any plumbing company? 
Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, they. It's phenomenal how much revenue can be produced, especially when they're done right. Yeah, you know, with with the proper equipment and the proper experience and the proper training. You know, it, that's the difference between digging a 20 foot tunnel or breaking a slab and being 30, 40 feet away. Yeah. You know, huge. Yeah. Go check it out. Leak pro.com. Scott Watson's the journeyman plumber out of Halton City. Fantastic. Cortez, the small leaks are the ones that cause the most damage. You know, they can be because they're the ones that, you know, nobody sees and, and they, they build up over time. Most leaks, I think, either occur relatively quickly and cause damage so you see it and get it. Done quickly, so it, it, it can go both ways. Uh, El Cal says, I wish we had a plumbing school here in South Atlanta. Single mom getting her plumbing degree online. Thanks for encouraging videos and getting women in the trades. Mm-hmm. Look, I, n- number one, I think there should be more women in the trades. Women are meticulous, they are focused. Do you, do you have any female plumbers under you or with you right now? Not with me right now, no. When I was, um, when I was working at another company, there was a, a female plumber, and man. Rock star, it's rock star, the, the, great the, person, great personality, great with customers, and it, it was really funny because I used to ask her. I would ask her. I said, you know, how do you, how was your average ticket so so good? She might even be watching this, but um, I was like, how was your average ticket so good? And she's like, well, if I go into the if I go in and I'm, I'm introduced to the husband or I meet the husband, I say it's okay. You know, I, you don't you don't have to tell me you got to talk to your wife. I'll just. I'll, I'll come back another day and they'll make a decision right then. And if it's the other way for the wife, Oh, I know you got to talk to your husband. And I was, you know, I know she meant it as a joke, but I mean, it might that be real. Good. It might be real. You bet. Mindset it. Congratulations on starting your apprenticeship. Cody Frank is right. The trades will roll the world. Guys, everybody getting in the trade right now. Look, the average age of plumbers in Texas right now is like 58 years old. Mm-hmm. That means the guys getting in right now are going to be the next entrepreneurs. The opportunity is there for you. Uh, again, congratulations. Mike Long says, Roger Wakefield, your video is very influential. Making me take a career switch into plumbing, I will be one of the best. Man, I love hearing that. Yep. Confidence. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Fourth Journey says, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be an honest plumber. The reason I got into plumbing because some shade tree plumber Tried to charge my mother $500 for a leaking sink. Man, you, you know, we, we've all got different reasons. I opened my own business because a big mechanical contractor here in Dallas was wanting to get into res- residential service just because they knew they could make a lot of money. And they were talking about, look, we're going to BS people. We're going to tell them we specialize in customer service. We're going to tell them we have the best trained plumbers, but they weren't doing anything about it. And I'm like, I don't want to be part of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Denver Charboy says... What are your thoughts on Nip- Nipex channel logs? What do you think? Nip- I hate them. Nipex. <laughs> really? See, I, I, I love them. I've got, I've got some in there. I love them. So, man, it's different for everybody. Yeah, So I think about like that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a video on those pretty soon because I do. I, I think there's something neat about them. I like my old water pump pliers, those $13 red hand or yellow hand. Slide, you get you bet. <laughs> Supply house. Ryan Penman says, DIY home repairman here. Can I use a sink P-trap on a bathtub? If you're plumbed in that way, I have seen slip joint P traps on the tub. I prefer glued with the slip joint in top for mm-hmm. your waste and overflow in. But yeah, I've seen them mm-hmm. installed that way all the time. Never says one thing I don't like about construction is installing six inch cast iron for storm drains, putting them in the hangers 25 feet up on a lift. You know, that never bothered me. The guy that doesn't complain and shows up daily needs a raise. <laughs> There, there's more to it than that, but but yes. <laughs> Ryan says, I think the most important thing that someone can do that wants to go far in the trades is be a literal sponge. Soak up every bit of information, good or bad. Uh, you learn more from the bad employees because you know what not to do. Old timers the way to go. They're going to show you a few things others know. Man, you nailed it right there. Yeah, lift an 8-inch pot by yourself isn't good. We have tools for that nowadays. Mm-hmm. Trevor says, I'm wanting to get into plumbing. How many hours do I need to become a journeyman plumber? 8,000. I also want to own my own company one day. If you don't go through a DOL training program, it means you've got to put in 8,000 more as a journeyman to get your master's. If you do go through a DOL training program like PHCC or the union or something, you only put in one more year, 2,000 more hours to get your master's. For For the journey, for the journey, I like that. Uh, as an apprentice, I just move super fast, work slow, 
and claim and say, yes, sir, even in the blazing Miami sun, mm -hmm. move super fast, work slow. I guess that's one way to look at it. Yes, yeah, sense of urgency and making yeah. sure it's done correctly. Exactly. And then done right. 10-4. Absolutely. Good afternoon. The apprentice, okay, Cortez, what do you think about customer service? Is it better to be yourself but have customer service? Is it better to be yourself but have customer service? I think that if you know how to do the work, then you can explain to the customer good. Man, customer service is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, we talked about Dustin earlier. Remember having Dustin and his wife out for dinner one night and we're talking to him. And Dustin says, you know, after I sell the job, that's when the performance begins. That's right. Because you you're you are. You're if you're not the cheapest guy in town, you better show them why. You better bring that value. And, and to me, that's what it's all about. Uh it's huge. Alex, what were some of the things that the best helpers you guys had were doing? Looking for stuff outside of things like showing up on time. What were some of the things your best apprentices did? Urgency. Everywhere they went, everything they did, there was a sense of urgency. They didn't um, They didn't stop to look at their phone. They didn't stop to make sure they text their spouse or significant other. They just point A to point B as fast as possible. You know, um, the, the, the work is going to take its course. And so, yeah, just urgency. One of my favorites was I had an apprentice in the union that I'm up hooking up a fan power box. And I got to where I was, and I looked, I needed, I needed a T and two more 90s. And I go to climb down the ladder, holler at him, and he's standing there with them in his hand, already cleaned. Yep. And I'm like, dude. So I'm piecing it together, pulling measurements, giving them to him. And when he handed me pieces of pipe, it was already cleaned, reamed, mm -hmm. ready to go. All I had to do is put it together. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's important too. You bet. Your apprentice should always be two steps ahead or more of you. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Milan says, Mega Press is the best. Change my mind, you mother threader. Look, I, I, I love both, but but I got to tell you, I love Mega Press. Yeah. Uh, I paid for a machine and one job. So it's it's a good thing to have. The clean oil is the same level. Oh, clean out the same level. Okay, I get that now. Yeah, it, look, it, your drain may be houses subtle. Things happen. I've gone into houses with inspectors to inspect, and they're like, well, it's not plumb. It's like, okay, the house dropped, the sewer didn't. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? He says, well, I'm not going to make them dig up the whole yard and do the whole sewer, make them tunnel under the house and raise everything. So what we'll just put in there that it's not plumb, but we'll make it work. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are honest with your customer, you'll be good. Uh, I had to ground underneath the foundation. Okay, so go underneath the foundation. Yeah, and we do that sometimes. Or you could have chipped the foundation out and maybe brought that level up. I've seen that too. Mains underneath the foundation had the six inch in the main. Rise up six inches. Yeah, that's not going to be good. Zanbu Zazi, how are you doing? Ryan says the grossest thing found in plumbing were some NSFW toys floating in the clean out. Uh, main drain clean out for the house had to go underneath the foundation and to reach the main city pipe had to go up five inches. No, I get it. It's not always good, but you know your choice is you – Dig out to the main, get it where you can get that lower if that's possible, or chip out part of the foundation where you can bring that up if that's possible. Or tunnel under the house and replace it all. Roof is starting to use PEX and looking to buy Milwaukee expansion tool, but with supposed lawsuit on open or I'm on the edge, what would you recommend? PEX A or PEX B? Which do you like better? PEX A or PEX B? Um... Just regular PEX. Well, I mean, open or is good. Like you said, well, going the back to the lawsuit, the yeah. expandable kind. Uh, just because it doesn't actually restrict the flow, I know that there's a lot of controversy on, on um, like Zernpex, for example, because they say that it's copper tube size, and but the in, inside diameter is actually less than what copper tube size would be. So your half inch um, Zernpex is actually three eighths, whereas your Upanor is half inch ID internally. So now, is this the size of the pop or the size of the fitting? The fitting. Okay, because see, yeah, I've been complaining about that for years, saying look. If, if you use PEX, upsize it. Mm -hmm. Go upsize one full size, and and, and you'll be good. Uh, so we got more no's on the uh, best the practice group, yeah. groups. Yep. Roger, what trade can 
your plumber blend with his plumbing skill to be value in the marketplace. HVAC is good. Uh, you know, HVAC has plumbing to it, but if you're doing HVAC, you're going to learn electrical, so you might as well do it all. Got a lot of no's there. Shane W says, tankless water heaters debate between circulation tank or not. Uh, concern for hot water tank, uh, not long enough to reach 60 feet away, shower and faucets. Yeah, put a circulation tank or a circulation system in there. Uh, Renai's got some that learn your habits now, mm-hmm. so it knows to circulate already. Uh, I think they're fantastic. I like the circulation. Mm-hmm. You? I, well, I, first of all, I love tankless water heaters. I know mm-hmm. that there's a lot of people, a lot of plumbers that um, are don't. on that don't. They're on the fence. Um, now, now, let me ask you this: Do you think it's they don't like them, or they just don't know enough about them to like them? Uh, probably they don't know enough about them. That's that's my yeah. Thought. You know, uneducation is is huge. Same thing when you know nowadays when we're doing uh, installing tankless water heaters or tankless water heater retrofit, I call it. And, you know, some of these plumbers are going in and telling these homeowners we got to take out all the gas pipe, upsize everything, co- cut open all the walls. But, you know, if you do your TDL, your total developmental length, and mm-hmm. then you do your load chart, you don't have to do that. There's ways to manipulate the system that it works just fine. Gas cl- Learning to do a gas load calculation chart is amazing. Rob says, I honestly like it, but the videos can be cringe sometimes. Also, we're big on Halo 5 whole home water filtration systems. Yeah, I don't like softeners. I, Halo 5 is what I've been installing. That's what I've got in my house right now. I did a video on it. I like them. Uh, but but I'm always looking at new product because mm-hmm. I want to see what's out there, what's better. Uh, Jim says yes. Okay, so we've got yes on, I'm assuming, Jim, that is on the best practice groups. Uh, Jonathan Mullen says no. She says any advice on becoming a sewer specialist? What kind of sewer specialist? Uh, sewer leaks, leak location, re- replacement. Uh, man, get a good camera, a hydro jetter. Uh, I love these flex shafts. Uh, men are great to work with, so that's it. that's what I would start out with. If you don't know how to do leak location, we're talking about that. I'm mm-hmm. building a training center here strictly for that reason because most plumbers don't know how to flip test balls. I don't. (laughs) And do different things, yeah. And so I'm building a system where I can train people on it and let them come out and practice. You know, Tristan, uh, I used to work on fire sprinkler systems. Uh, I did that when I was a non-union company that I worked for. Everybody had left, gone to this fire protection company, went down to Austin, and I got to go down there and run that job, so it was pretty cool. Matt Scott 51 says, I'm 59, been in 19 years. Guys, you can start plumbing at 40. Uh, you really can. You can learn and grow. Uh, well, I guess at 65, is it too late to get into plumbing? I'm going to say not if that's what you really want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, you can get in and learn to do anything. At 65, I don't know if I would – I don't know if I'd do commercial or, or residential uh, I'd probably do residential service because it's a lot smaller, easier stuff to work on. It's not going to be any of that eight inch pop and things like that. Uh, the only way you build confidence in plumbing is get in, do it, and, and do it over and over and over again. Ask questions when you don't know and learn to do things right. Michael Long says, "Are there things I can learn or get certified in that would help me make help make my employer more money and therefore help me earn a higher wage?" Uh, I mean, if you're already a licensed plumber, yes, but you have to have the demand or the need for that, you know, um, the, the best thing that you could do. One thing I had to learn was not be so laser focused. You know, are you really doing your homeowner, your customer any justice by staying so single minded that you go straight into the problem? You're there for a reason. You're there for peace of mind. So give that customer the peace of mind. You know, check the problem that you're there for, but also inspect the whole home. Do an evaluation, I call it. Make sure that you're giving that homeowner the peace of mind and knowing that when you leave there and two days down the road, their water heater is not going to rupture or there's not going to have a water leak. Check it all out. Yeah, check it all out. Do the whole house. It's open. It's huge. And and my thing is, Learn everything about whole house water filtration. Learn slab leaks and leak detection. Had a guy asking a while ago about about being a sewer specialist. Mm -hmm. Those are things that every plumber doesn't know how to do. 
uh, gas load calculation charts. Learn how to do them at your company better than anybody else. I'm going to start flying through these comments because I know we're behind. I got five minutes to go. Uh, what's your opinion on rough plumbing? Can I make a career out of it? Absolutely. Uh, if you like playing in the dirt, if you're talking ground rough, uh, if you like topping out, if you're talking wall rough, yeah, there's people that can specialize a whole whole career just being good at certain parts of it. Mm -hmm. Main drain coming out of the house through the underneath foundation, footing concrete, then climb to about seven inches. Yeah, you're going to have problems. Definitely. Uh, you, you, plumbing doesn't just flow back up. It, it, now, you may install a pump system. There's a lot of different things you could do. Yeah. But, yeah, it'll lead to problems. Uh, ICAST Enterprises, I love this. Who's going to Vid Summit? Me. Uh, I will be over there Monday evening, ready for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'm back Friday because I'm in Daryl Eve's uh, Channel Jumpstart in his mastery course, which is phenomenal, so looking forward to it. Dave Mirkus says, love this, boys. Thank you. Much love from British Columbia. Love that. Good to have you in here. Oh, British Columbia, Canada. There we go. Uh, changing out two toilets this afternoon. You know, it's funny. Whenever I speak at conferences like that, I get up on stage. I say, I'm Roger Wakefield. I'm just a plumber. People start laughing. I'm like, no, really. I was unstopping toilets the other day. I'll be unstopping them tomorrow. That's what I do. <laughs> Roger, how do you fit allowances for Ys and Ts? How do you do fitting allowances for Ys and Ts? Know what your fitting takes off. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't have an allowance for it. You've got to know the exact dimensions. Understand how fitting allowance works for 45s and 90s. Not sure how to do it with Ys. It's the exact same. You've got to know the dimension of your fitting. Uh, what can you recommend for an acreage on a cistern? So conserve or even reuse as much water as possible. Alberta, Canada. Look, I love rainwater harvesting and groundwater reclamation. I think it's something that as the population keeps growing, we're going to get more and more into. Mm hmm. Uh, great information. Never too late till the heart stops beating. Have you ever pulled a new water line with a tow truck and cable? Not only have I done it, I've made a video about it. It's yep. great. Uh, had Oscar mm. uh, do that with me. Uh, called me out to do it. Joseph Allen says, 23, been doing it since I was a kid. My father was a master. Very young with him, riding around in a truck. Michael Taylor said, this may blow your mind, but back when I was young in the 70s, father would put muriatic acid in the tankless water heater to clean it out. Uh, the rust that was put in the building in the early 90s. Yeah, there's better ways to filter them now, but, yeah, we used to use neuritic acid for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, is it normal to start as a full-time plumbing apprentice with no experience? Yes. I feel like I have no time. Then don't do it. Waking up at 4.30, home by 3, bed by 8.30, it's impossible to get enough sleep. No, it's not. You've just got to – you've got the same amount of hours in your day as, as we have. Mm. And, and we not only did it, we became masters at it. Global Wildfire says, I cast enterprise. Jason sounds like you need to figure out how to get to Vid Summit. Man, it's great. <clears throat> uh, Francisco Rosso says, do y'all structure with a sales team and separate team of plumbers, or is it all one? Are you bidding jobs? There's some sales plumbers. that Some companies have sales plumbers that go out, look, and communicate and set up the work. Then there's installers that come in. Some companies do both. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, different companies are different, and they're set up different ways. Man, we got through that good, hit the hit it hard right there at the end. Yeah. Uh, guys, look, it was a great podcast that I did with Alex earlier. It'll be out in a couple of weeks. You've got a link down below to the Trade Talks 2.0. Go check that out. Uh, I've got a lot of great people in there that, man, j just do good stuff. Uh, Alex, tell people how they can get in touch with you if, if they'd like to get in touch with you to find out more about you, what you do, and all that. Okay. Uh, I have a Facebook page, North Texas Master or I'm sorry, North Texas Master Plumbers. And then you can also just message me through there um, or get in touch with Roger and he can shoot me a text or whatever. Guys, here's the thing uh, there, there's so many great opportunities out there. Uh, get in touch with. Alex, get in touch with, if you're interested in getting in the trades, get in touch with a, a company in your area. If you know you want to do service, if you don't want to know you want to do construction, whatever it is, get in touch with the right people and figure it out. Remember, this video was sponsored by Leak Pro. If you're interested in learning slab leak detection, location, isolation, anything like that, go check out leak-pro.com. 
Uh, I personally think that is one of the best leak detection locating systems out there. It's electronic. It's fantastic. And it puts you right on it. So go check it out. Leak-pro.com. Brother, thank you for being here. This has thank been you. fun. Guys, make sure you go over and check out the podcast. If you have not gone over and subscribed to the other channel yet, Trade Talks 2.0, there it is. Go check it out. And, man, there's a lot of good stuff over there. I hope you enjoyed it today. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you all again next week. You really want to be here, especially if you're from Canada, because we got Jeff from Home Reno TV DIY, Home Reno DIY TV in the house. He will also be at Vid Summit, so it's going to be good. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.